loses a bunch of torque, it gets rich, and then it recovers. All right, guys. So it is an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, for those that are new to the channel, this is my Charger RT. Uh, and we're going to go over one of the modifications that are in there. That is my Monte Carlo with a 5.3 liter V8. Uh, the modification that we're going to talk about today and answer some of the questions is the intake manifold. And I went ahead and put a 392 intake manifold on onto my 5.7. And I keep getting a lot of questions about this and uh, for good reason, a lot of people wanna upgrade it. Uh, so with that being said, you know, before I get a kick started, let's cue the intro. We're going to address quite a few of the comments and, and uh, questions that have been uh, directed towards me. And there's actually one major flaw or there's one major thing that needs to be adjusted if you choose to get a 392 manifold. And for your, all of you guys that have a 392, uh, this might be something that is of interest to you. Um, so if you have a 392 already, skip to this time frame this way you don't uh you don't have to worry about all the other stuff so then one of the questions one of the most popular questions is how much did i actually spend uh to convert this to a a, a 392 manifold uh and for the most part it was a roughly around a thousand dollars okay so i got the manifold the fuel rails the uh 392 injectors all for about 450 dollars um it cost me I think it was two, two to three hundred dollars uh, for installation. Now, if you choose to go with a six one or an Edelbrock, the installation actually is not very complicated. It's a direct re replacement uh, for the five seven. But with the three ninety two manifold, uh, you're going to have to get yourself an MSD box. And what that does is it tells the runners inside here when to go from long to short. So you set this at an optimal RPM and when the car hits that RPM, it feeds the, you know, tells the, the runners inside the manifold to switch, feeding the air, you know, more efficiently into the engine. Uh, so that pretty much covers the, the pricing. Uh, what that factors is the MSD box, the manifold, all the other goodies that come along with that, like the injectors, um, it also covered uh, the intake. So I'm roughly around $1,000 for everything installed and, and whatnot. So you could probably get better prices. Um, and if you want everything brand new, uh, you're probably gonna end up spending a little bit more. Uh, so that leads to the next part, which is performance. Is it really actually worth it? Now, and the only other two options that you have on the table other than this would be a 6.1 SRT manifold and an Edelbrock, both of which are extremely similar. Now, I don't really have any of the testing uh, to really, you know, kind of tell you which is better. That being said, the reason why I went with this is because of those active runners. And my thought process behind this is that if Dodge went and and you know developed this new technology to put in their naturally aspirated hemi why wouldn't i so uh, i wanted the latest and the greatest and from a performance angle uh you could take a look at the dyno sheets right now yeah here in the mid-range you picked up about 30 foot pounds of torque and 20 horsepower to the wheel 3500 so it's not for this mod uh -huh. it's not exactly about the top end it's right. more about the middle and across the band exactly so i guess what a lot of the misconception with this mod is is people are looking for the top end of it and they're not looking so much down here in the mid-range yeah. down in the mid-range yeah it has certainly translated into a much better performance vehicle so uh as you could set, see by the dynos uh results uh even without a tune the msd with the the runners 
uh, it certainly has translated into a better performance vehicle. Um, now, the negative part about the 392 manifold, and as you, if you look really, really careful at the dyno sheets, and this is on a whole bunch of different cars. You could see it on a stock uh, 2019 Scat Pack all the way to uh, a person with a 2013, 2014 uh, RT that used this manifold is that at the RPM that's designated that you select, you will see a major dip in horsepower and then it glides back up. Uh, this is something that can be actually tuned out. And it, when I put it on my RT uh, and I jumped on the dyno, I noticed this huge dip at that RPM. And I wanna give a shout out to Ted over at Genetic Racing for actually tuning out the the transition to make it seamless um and so if you have a 392 uh and you jumped on the dyno you would see this this dip from sh uh long to short and uh that could be tuned out i don't know how much it actually affects performance but there definitely has to be some kind of loss to it because there is a recovery time you're looking at this dip in the torque curve this is where the, uh, the intake manifold goes from short runner to long runner. And when it makes that transition, it loses a bunch of torque, it gets rich, and then it recovers. And then the short runners will carry the RPM and give you horsepower up here. So the 392 is pretty cool in that respect that it has what they call active runner controls. Um, and I can move that RPM around and I'm going to raise it probably 100, maybe 200 RPM and smooth that dip out. I'm also going to lean out the air fuel ratio and then see what it'll tolerate for timing once I get the air fuel dialed in. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, that's a friendly heads up to anybody that's looking into this. Uh, for the most part, I would say this was a great upgrade. Uh, but like any other kind of upgrade, you know, there's always some drawbacks and and everything so you know I know I didn't start this video off with a cold start but I will end it with one I hope you all have a fantastic day